Shetty. Welcome to Luminosity TV. In the last two weeks, we've talked about the body and I thought, well, let's now give some credit to the mind because we all know that the body can be sitting quietly here while the mind is, has been running around town creating havoc. And that's why you can be walking freely on earth. You can think that you're free, but whoever has control of your mind has you as their prisoner until you yourself decide whether or not you want to remain a prisoner or not. No doubt you've watched the movie, The Matrix. And if you haven't, well, you must be the only one left on the planet. But for those of you who have watched the movie, whether or not you believe it's just science fiction or it's trying to tell us something truthful that's going on, it really doesn't matter because the truth of the matter is that there's still a large number of people living in this matrix that we call the earth who believe in their minds that this physical world is all there is, that there's nothing but beyond just this their physical body, and that when they die, that's it, everything ends for them. How very limiting and sad is that? We live in a world where information is now at our fingertips, and you can simply Google everything and believe it to actually be correct without actually reflecting on it intuitively because we now lay so much emphasis on intellectual knowledge rather than what we intuitively feel to be right. There's no time like the present where our mind is being pulled into so many different directions with lots of external influence and information coming at us. And this is simply because many of us are not aware that our reality is shaped by what we expose our minds to. And so whoever wants to manipulate your mind only needs to constantly feed your energy with whatever they want. And in my experience on this journey, I've realized that it is spiritually unhygienic of you to allow anything and everything to have access to your energy fields. If you understand how important your energy is, you'll guard it from undue influence from the external world. Most of us embrace all this information and thought processes, thinking that it makes us intellectually savvy and advanced. But sooner or later, there's a breakdown because the mind can only take so much of a foreign influence before it loses its own identity. So the question is, do you have your identity intact in this matrix? With all the information that's coming at us daily, how do we sift through the garbage how do we take what's relevant from the outside world? How do we discard what is not serving us energetically? How do we unplug from this matrix? One of the most difficult things for many people who are stuck at this time is forgetting that this is not our home, that we are merely guests on this planet, using this body as an avatar to experience. And so true living only begins when you remember who you are, where you have come from, and why the goal is to eventually go back to where the spirit belongs. The only way that this awareness can begin to happen is when we quieten the mind and do what I call a self-inquiry, a self-examination. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? When the mind is not racing so much from the excitement of the outside world, when it's not reminiscing about the past or projecting and planning the future, when it's just living in the present moment, then the voice of the spirit, which we call the inner voice or the intuition, can be heard more clearly. And that voice is so necessary right now as a loyal guide for us in the middle of all this chaos. Just like your phone, when it's glitching, you sometimes need to shut it down or, or, or reset it. Com you know, sometimes you have to completely shut it down for a few minutes. And then when you turn it back on, it starts working again normally. The mind is a bit like that. When you shut it down in silence, in a state of calmness, it gains more power, which then allows it to function better. I don't need to tell you the dense nature of this matrix that we're in right now and how collectively we have created this low levels of consciousness that has enslaved us and it's been fueled by 
the greed and the, the money, power, influence, control, vanity, and all this mass psychosis is now leading more and more people into darker versions of themselves. Have you asked yourself, why is there a huge rise in mental illness? Dwelling in these low states of consciousness, it makes people devoid of love and light. And this cuts them off from being able to receive divine love. And so the battery cannot be charged. And to charge the battery, which gives life to the spirit, we have to connect to the source. And so you find that a lot of people have lost that connection so that even though they're physically alive, the soul has lost its vitality, its humanness, its knowingness. Because we keep allowing our energy to be exploited in this low levels of consciousness. And as spiritual beings, this is not what we were designed to be. We were meant to be operating and upgrading our software to higher levels of consciousness. We were meant to be custodians and radiators of love and light. The mind is like a sponge. It soaks up everything and attracts similar energies to itself. So imagine if I was radiating that love and you were radiating it back to me, then what a beautiful world it would be that we're living in. If I'm singing a song right now, I give you 10 minutes, <laughs> I bet you'll be humming that song as well, and even though I've left the room. But it's because we are always affected by each other's energies. So your duty is to guard your own energy and only expose it to higher vibrational frequencies such as love, kindness, empathy, compassion, peace, and joy. Which is why I say all of your senses are creating your reality. It's not only your mouth that's eating. All of your senses are also eating as well. The things you watch are very important. Your eyes are eating. Your ears are eating. All of it shapes your reality. Like I always say, those who like to watch reality shows where there's so much drama and, and friends are backbiting and fighting each other, they always end up bringing such drama into their own lives and their own friendships because they cannot separate their reality from it. The kind of music that you are listening to, this affects your energy as well. Music that uplifts your soul is different from low vibrational music that's promoting violence and, and disrespecting women, which is why nothing good ever comes out of those places where these low vibrational music are being played. There's always tension and fighting and things like that. Human touch and those we surround ourselves with, that matters a lot for our energy. When you physically touch or hug someone, you are also passing your energy to them and vice versa. And they can affect your mood. They can either lower or help you increase your own energetic fields. So we must be on our guard always. Of course, there are other things, other living things that affect our vibration, like flowers, crystals, animals. My little, my little dog affects my vibration sometimes. So your mind is a powerful tool with which you can control your reality. So keep it safe and do not expose it to everybody. And above all, we must learn to unplug from this illusion of our earthly ego that believes that this earth is all there is and the pursuit of earthly achievements and success is the only goal that is there. We must now embrace our true spiritual self, which is the ultimate, the final boss stop, the end of discussion. At the moment, creation is going through a death and a rebirth cycle, which means that our earth is literally going through a spiritual cleansing. And whether people want to believe it or not, all that is dying and decaying spiritually must now be given room to burn out finally. And all that is alive will be further strengthened to enjoy more of that aliveness. So in this matrix, you must decide where you choose to stand. Are you part of the collapse or the rebirth? Part of the soulless or the soulful? Are you part of the dead or those who are still alive? Are you part of the darkness or part of the light? If you are part of the light, there's no more half measures. There's no more sitting on the fence. You must now turn and lean towards the light consciously 
now more than ever on this journey. Only then would we recognize the divine perfection of our Creator in all of the small and mighty happenings that's going on around us. Are you ready to unplug from low to high? Are you willing to join the high vibers and do away with the illusion of this matrix? I know I am, because in truth, we are not of this world and we shouldn't ever get stuck in it. No one wants to live on the road or in a hotel forever. We must long for home. Until next time, I wish you a more conscious journey through this matrix. Bye for now.